Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. You know what, whenever you're not having a good day, such as I had today, being back in the studio, being able to continue to work on a painting, especially starting the first color pass, which would be the uh, introduction to the local color stage. You know, just getting to mix colors today is going to be awesome. So let's look at the palette here. And so we've got titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium yellow medium, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and neo McGilt medium. And so today is a Friday for me. I actually just came back from the Hood College portrait group. I remember I attend a portrait painting group. Uh, usually I attend it <laughs> Friday mornings every day, but man, today was difficult. It was the start of a six week pose. And for some reason, I just hit the snooze button. <laughs> I hit the snooze button on my alarm and I slept in. And uh, so the, you usually want to get there really, really early uh, to get the best spot. And you have to reserve that spot for uh, the remaining weeks. So uh, a little bit of the story of what's going on with me today. <laughs> but I'm just happy to be here to paint. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. Remember that uh, we're like family here because I'm really thankful that you're watching my uh, show every single day. And, you know, it's not always sunshine and daisies. You know, I want to share, you know, the ups and the downs with you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to begin introducing color color into this area of the painting. So I'm going to be thinking of the average color within a given area that is by definition the local color stage and I think just for today I'm just going to take my time with this area. And I actually did film at the, the Hood College Portrait Group but the problem is uh, all of the footage I cannot use the audio. Uh, well I never use the audio there anyway but the problem was that um, my camera shot got messed up in several in several ways and I was really happy with the painting which just uh, <laughs> anyway anyway let's talk about what's going on here on the palette so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up the color value web and like I said I'm gonna be telling you like you know the whole thing like the, the life of the artist you know um, it's important to talk about the truth. You know, things don't always work out the way you want them to work out. But for me, just every time I can paint, you know, just every time I can just mix these colors, it just brings so much joy to my life. Um, so we're actually using a different palette. We're not using Lumpy today just because I already had the colors on my palette. Um, so I didn't feel like taking out another palette and putting more paint. More exciting news, actually. I have a... Um, a palette coming in the mail, a new one of this same brand um, coming in the palette, a larger one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yellow ochre is missing in here. I actually forgot to put yellow ochre in the palette. I'm all over the place today. But you know, we have some days like this, okay? Presenting you with the truth. All right, so now we're putting in the flake white. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a kind of gray, orangey pink color. And this is going to be for the local color pass. Or should I say local color stage? We're going to start the local color stage. So now I'm putting in more of the uh, titanium white. Let's see if I can get you closer to the mixtures. Cadmium yellow medium, titanium white. The brush is falling apart, but it's okay. A little more titanium white. All right, more Neo McGilt medium, more titanium white. See this spot right here is too, uh, I want to say it's too red. So I'm going to use the uh, sap green, sap green into here, ultramarine blue. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up the rails. So here's going to be the cool rail. So this is going to be, this is going to be ultramarine blue, ivory black. And this is what I mean by a rail. It's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter progressively as we move up. So this might be for the color of the sclera or something that's cool or in gray and whatnot. So that's the warm, sorry, that's the cool rail. So now let's go ahead with the same old dirty brush. Let's go ahead and mix up the warm rail. So the warm rail is going to be with the uh, I'm starting off with the alizarin crimson permanent and cadmium red medium and now we're going to use the flesh tones just like this to get 
the warm rail and see how it's gradually getting lighter. And I'm going to be picking and choosing from this area here. Okay, this is my color value web with a warm rail and a cool rail. Alrighty then, who am I going to who am I going to take to use or to start off? Uh, let's say okay, this one this one is this one still alive? This one Mm. Uh, maybe not that one. All right, let's use these. And usually I will oil out the painting just to bring back the original uh, color and intensity that it had. Uh, but you know, I don't really think that I'm gonna oil it out this time just because I don't wanna add too much oil into the, uh, the painting since this is going to have, this is going to have multiple layers. Uh, I don't want to put in too much oil. So just taking from the flesh tones, we're going to get a lighter color. So now I'm just going to, uh, should I use the same brush? Hmm. I'm going to switch for the lighter colors, okay? So we're going to switch for this one right here. And as I said before, I'm not really going to, um, you know, try to have a thick impasto-like finish on the painting. Rather, I want it to be a little thinner, more kind of like smooth, just because I think that that kind of helps to combat the glare. You know, I don't want too much glare in the painting. Speaking of materials, uh, if you would like to purchase or know the same type of materials that I'm using, uh, I have the materials along with affiliated Amazon links in the description box down below. Just know that if you do decide to purchase from Amazon using my affiliate links, Amazon will pay me a small amount in return so thank you so much thank you so much in advance if you do do that some of you have already purchased from those links and if you are listening and you have purchased from those Amazon links thumbs up you know thumbs up with the palette thumbs up I'm giving you a thumbs up thank you so so much I am so grateful and again I'm also grateful for my patrons I now have the patreon and like I said, I'll be giving uh, the first tier, you'll be getting shout outs. But just know that, um, you know, sometimes I will film an episode a couple days before it is released. So, um, you know, I'm kind of behind on two patrons right now. So you will get your shout out at the end of today's video. And if anyone signs up to my Patreon, you know, while I'm filming this or like while I'm editing or something like that, then uh, you will get your shout out in the next video and so on and so forth just to clarify that and so this is just chill okay this is so so relaxing i chose a plane here that was lighter okay and then i chose a plane here that was a little bit darker but not really that much darker over here now it's going to pick up light over here notice i'm mainly talking about value okay value even though we're using color i chose in the color value web an average color of which I created different variations of tone of that color okay and this is in essence the most basic color and sometimes that's all you really need but for our purposes this uh, the local color stage is going to set the stage for the perceptual color stage where we will go in and um, you know, start to relate specific color spots, but that is for uh, after this layer dries. Okay, so now it's getting a little bit darker. As we move up here, you ever just feel at home when you're painting or, you know, if you enjoy playing a sport or something like that, you know, you could be having the worst day ever. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're playing your sport, your, your video game or whatever, what have you. And you just feel at home, like th th this is it for me, painting. And in particular, you know, classical painting. It just feels so right to me. It just, it, I don't know, you know? This is another one of those chill kind of zen like days. And like I always say, you know, um, 
in a world that can be so negative, and I know I've been kind of negative um, for the past, I don't know, however many minutes, but I'm already cheering up, you know? This is just like all around positive experience. So I'm pushing, uh, I'm using actually, I don't know if you can see it, I'm using the warm right there. I'm using from the warm rail. Okay, so warm rail right there. And so even though this is the local color stage, you know, you can choose to push the hue in certain areas. And look at that, just, just look at that already. Already, it's starting to take form, and I'm talking about this area here, without that much work. Now, isn't that neat? And again, I'm not using any extra medium than what was already used when I was mixing the color value web. Now, ideally, you want to use more medium as you move up in the layers, in your number of layers, okay? Ideally. All right, now I'm pushing a little darker. You know, I should have switched brushes for that shape. Um, like I said, I really, really need to go and get some new brushes. But you know, I'm one of those, those people <laughs> One of those artists that it's really hard to get me out of the studio. It's really hard to get me to stop painting. This is like my oxygen. This is definitely my happy place. And I want to present this experience to you. I want you to feel the kind of happiness that I feel when I'm painting. A little bit darker there, and a little lighter over here. I try to soften that edge. Okay. All right, so now it looks like we're gonna have to darken a little bit somewhere beneath the lower eyelid, somewhere about like so, right there. And for the um, the iris, I'm not going to forget to put the color of the iris. I'm using the cool rail, okay? Using a darker area from the cool rail. And now I'm going to actually move up in value using the cool rail right there. I hope I remembered to put this camera on manual focus so it's not. Um, Zooming in and out of the autofocus. There we go. You know, I don't really see that in the photo reference. You know, I'll admit I don't see that. Uh, that gradation of tone right there for the uh, sclera. But conceptually, I know that it needs to be there. Just because the sclera is turning away from us. And a little darker. and A little pinker, but not too much more pink. So I'm going to take a little more of a neutral color. So you know, um, the color value web, the color value web is kind of like, um, you know, when you're, uh, see I don't work with digital art, but I was actually trying to make a logo, like actually maybe like 20 minutes ago. And um, I was using like a paint app and um, they had you know, this like circle, you know, the color wheel, and then you can pick and choose like the value that you put in to the color wheel. So it's kind of similar to that. That's what the color value web is similar to, but on your palette. A little bit of a darker shape there. What am I doing? Putting in eyelashes this early. Oh dear. Oh well. Oh well. As long as you're enjoying the process. A little bit of a lighter plane here. Yep. Look at that. Even like a small shape of color. I mean, look at that. Like it starts to create the form. Like, look at that. It's just emerging. It, it just, it always has this impact on me. 
I don't know if it does, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if it does for you. You know, when the painting, like when you just start to put in color, when you superimpose, you know, the first flesh tones over top of the uh, grisaille or the monochromatic underpainting. It's just, it's amazing. And now we're putting in a little more of a uh, kind of neutral tone there for the side plane of the nose. And then the maxilla plane, the plane for the maxilla right over here. And again, I'm not trying to, um, you know, try, I'm not trying to color match by any means. I'm not trying to finish by any means. And what I'm doing is I'm, you know, relating the values. You know, the priority here still remains to be the values. And once you get those values locked in, you know, once this area dries, I can come back in with a more transparent application of paint and then start to add more variety into the color tones, the color tones, the color relationships. I mean, what, what joy, I mean, this really does make my day so much better. I hope that if, if you know what, if you had a rough day today, like I did, I really hope that, you know, just you sitting there listening to me makes your day more positive. That's what I really want. You know, this is kind of actually what I do instinctively when I have a rough day. You know, instinct instinctively, I almost said extinct. Instinctively, I kind of just retreat to the canvas, to the studio. You know, some, just the smell of the oil paint, you know, the smell of the mediums. I know, I know, that might sound weird, but you know, just like the odors, the canvas, the oil paint, the medium, like, it's happy. Makes me very happy. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to push some of these planes of color right over here, so it's actually darker than I had it. There we go. A little bit darker, more uh, kind of reddish. But what matters is that it's darker. It's plain over here. As it turns away from the light. Something's up. I'm standing up. Something's looking kind of strange. And I think it's this tone. Oof. What happened there? I take that away. Put something warmer. I mean cooler. There we go. Much more of a subtle transition there. The idea with this stage, um, again, is to you know start to continue to build, obviously on the uh, you know the, the realism of the picture, but also you know to start to lay down a layer that can be built upon, thus enabling you to have a more coherent finish to your painting as opposed to uh, you know like in Alla Prima. In Alla Prima of course I love that technique and of course um, today I actually painted in Alla Prima and um, if I can if I can salvage the footage then you'll probably see it tomorrow but no promises there. But anyway um, like I said I'm doing some formal writing on this this technique, um, and the idea is to, uh, in this stage, is to continue to build, okay? It's taking from the color value web, so that's gonna be a little bit darker, 
a little bit pinker, a little bit lighter here, more kind of flesh, fleshy, if that's even a word. Okay. Whoa, see that's way too dark. I used the cool, I'm sorry, the warm rail, so now I'm using the cool rail to uh, push that plane. Easy, super easy. All right, gonna do that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna use a different brush then, or not. Uh, yeah, give me a second here. Okay. Actually, first, let me take that out, what I just did. Okay, I'm trying to get that value. It's a little bit darker, but not quite as dark as the dark of the nostril. Okay, there. And, um, you know I, know, I know I was really somber in the start of today's um, video. But again, I really want to present you with the reality. You know, if, if I'm going to be uploading these episodes daily for however long I'm going to be uploading them daily, I really want to present the truth to you. You know, some days I'm just not feeling good. But this is how I overcome that not feeling goodness, you know. I'm not going to hide anything from you. Which will probably get me in trouble, but whatever. I want to present you with the truth. Okay, so I think that that shadow right here, I'm going to just leave that in the underpainting stage, though with a little bit of a intermediate tone there. I'm going to soften that edge. Now we're going to work our way across to the uh, cheek, cheekbone a little bit. Woof! That's way too bright. All right, that's a little more neutral, a little better. I'm using the cool rail to bring that temperature down. Yep, there we go. All right, simple and easy. A little more, woof, a little, a little pinker. That's way, that was way too pink. Pinker, a little more pink. Okay. Now, of course, it's going to be darker. Woof, there's a fly in here. Oh, man, I'm all over the place. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, so darker over here. And I think that the underpainting value and color will work for the sclera on this side, but let me not forget the other iris. So I'm gonna use the cool rail. Okay, cooler rail. I'm gonna put in that value. Now we're gonna get the dark. It was very minimal mixing, too. Very minimal mixing. There. Alright. Don't want to do too much for the eyelashes. Okay, so now we're going to work our way. How about here? To this side plane of the top of the orbicularis oris right over here. So this needs to be darker, but just a little bit darker than this. Don't want to overdo. Don't want to overdo that. Lighter up here. There's a lighter plane there for the filtrum. There. Then it's going to get subtle. I mean, it's gonna, this is going to be very subtle, okay? You, you ready for subtle? Because this, this is going to be very subtle. Um, so right here, okay? Now be very, very careful with these areas. This is like the no-no area. Like if you make it too dark, you know, if you make it too dark, especially on a, a model that's 
in her 20s, like middle 20s, early to middle 20s. Actually, I don't know her age, but I'm pretty sure she's in her 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be very, very careful with this value. If it becomes too dark, oh no, that, that is a danger zone. But yet you want it to be noticeable. So here's where the subtlety comes in. And in fact, this is actually one of the most complex areas on a, on a young model. Okay, so listen up and listen carefully. Um, right here, okay, this whole area is a plane that's turning away from the light. But in fact, it is very similar to the surrounding plane. So this one here. And then this one is darker too. So this one is darker than this one, but it's lighter than this one. So again, there's a whole lot of stuff going on there. It's very, very complex in terms of the value. And I'm just taking right from the color value web. You know, I, I don't care about color matching. I don't care about getting the exact color right now. That's useless to me. Right now, what I need is to get the under, underlying structure of the model's face with basic color. So that's the bottom plane of the orbicularis oris that's darker right here, and it's going to get lighter there. But very, very subtle. You know, and these are planes. In essence, these are planes. So I'm going to take from the warm rail, so hopefully you can see this. I'm going to take from right here and I'm going to make this area a little pinker. Not much, but you know what I mean. Again, hopefully you can see this. Sorry if you cannot. Darker over there. Okay. And now what I need is a smaller plane. So let's see. I'm using the darker area of the, well, let's just show you here. So this area, right? Mixing this, this, this. Hopefully camera is picking this up. It might not be in focus because I think I have, I have it on manual focus. Okay. Just simple little touches. Not too much. Just whisper that plane ever so slightly. And then one here. There. And then I can leave that. No, nope, 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 nope. Never mind, never mind. All right. So I want to make it kind of, um, I don't know, like a neutral warm lavender color you know not necessarily you know I don't want to look I don't want it to look like a generic pink okay you know I want some nuance to this tone there and a little lighter yep a little bit lighter right here And all into here. Okay, doing way too much for the lips. I'm gonna get a dry brush. Just kind of bring this down. And by bring that down, I mean just kind of uh, scatter the paint and just soften this so it's not as noticeable. I don't want it to be just yet. All right, now we're returning to the color value web. Whoa, that's way light. Whoa, 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 that's way too light. But you know, I kind of like that. Maybe that means I can push. Well, I guess that's a happy accident, right? And again, not, not to mock Bob Ross, okay? I love Bob Ross. Like, I watch his videos when I'm eating dinner or, you know, having lunch or something. You know, one of my favorite things listening to Bob Ross is whenever he says, well, get a big old two inch brush, a big old this, big old that. 
Love his accent. See, yeah, that was a happy accident because I thought that was too light. But then I realized, wait a minute, I can go lighter and I can continue to push these areas. So, yeah, let's keep pushing. And um, like I usually say, when you're working with layers, you know you're going to put another layer on a certain area. Like, I know I'm going to put another layer on this. You know, it's okay to work lighter and softer. Lighter and softer, okay? We can push the values all around here. Spreading light. Okay, now back to the color value web. There. Yeah, and you know, like, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like with some YouTube content, um, you know, some of actually like watching pet YouTubers, they're always so happy. <laughs> like, you know, there's always this positiveness that comes out of their, you know, their episodes. And I ever wonder if they're having a bad day and they're like pretending to be happy or something. You ever wonder that? Well, you don't have to wonder that with me. <laughs> when I'm having a bad day, you're going to know about it <laughs> when I'm filming because, you know, like how today started. And even the duration of this clip, like I know I've been in this clip for a very, very long time. I usually will cut certain segments out, you know, just so the video is not too long. But, I don't know. This is just how I relax. And I hope it's relaxing for you. That's what I want to inspire um, education, relaxation, positivity. That's what I want. Oof, it's way too red. There. And I'm going to try to maintain, uh, you know, the flatness of the shadow. Meaning I'm not going to try to go in and too much variation with the shadow. A little more pink over there. And now we're going to return to that very complicated area. And so, there's going to be a plain change here. I'm actually using, um, I don't know if you can see this, but the cool rail mixed with the darker, uh, the darker middle tone region of the color value web. And I'm just pushing this, um, you know, this plain change. So it's going to be darker here. Okay, darker right here. And it's going to pick up again over there. So hang on there, okay. We're going to do this. Okay, so it's going to get darker there. And now we're going to venture towards the cheekbone, zygomatic region. I think today's episode is going to be a very long episode. And again, with what happened today at the, uh, the hood group, I was, I knew automatically, like, um, you know, going into my editor that I would have to cut out a lot of stuff because some of the footage uh, didn't go well. So, you know, if you're watching this the same day it was uploaded, I was literally painting this like the night before. <laughs> but man, do I really enjoy this. A little bit of a softer plane change there. So it's going to get darker there, okay? It's going to get darker, and then it's going to pick up again here, okay? But even though it's going to pick up again here, it's going to be darker than this. So we are definitely working out the subtlety of these values, okay? And um, if you've never done a cast drawing, uh, you know, or a cast painting, I have done both. Um, you know, if you've never spent a long time on a cast drawing or a cast painting, or even a still life object, I would I would highly and I mean highly recommend uh, you do that. You know, if you can paint a cast or draw a cast and make it look super super realistic, like make the thing look like it's like emerging out of the canvas or whatever, uh, with just monochrome. Okay, just just monochrome. If you can do that with a cast, which is a much easier thing than this, much more controlled thing than this, you are in a good place to work out the subtlety on the, on the face.
But again, I was lucky, okay? I know I'm talking a lot and painting a lot today, but I was lucky in my training. I had really, really good teachers, like I mentioned before in some of my videos. You know, we even took a trip to in Kaminati, uh, you know, the place where I studied back in 2011. I had some really, really good teachers, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Okay, so now, you know, with the same... Mm, never mind. Different brush. Different brush. Hopefully you can see this. Warm, sorry, the cool rail. Okay, so this is a little more gray, a little darker. Now we're going to push this value. Okay, so again, I'm going to take from over here. Hopefully you can see that. Every time I do that, I take a risk of not filming the right spot until I get a camera crew. Okay, so just pushing that value a little bit darker, and I think we're at a good place now with the face. Uh, maybe, maybe just maybe I want to soften. Soften this with a brush that's not soft, but whatever. Just wanted to soften that. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do, okay? Hopefully you can see this. I don't know if you can. I'm going to just take the ivory black, uh, lizard, crimson permanent, sap green. Okay. And let's look over here. Oop, ultramarine blue. Okay. There. Okay, so that value, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the edge over here. And I already know today's episode is going to be a very long episode, so, you know, just whatever. I'm not going to cut anything. I'm going to show you all of it. All right. So, see, what I'm going to do in the underpainting, what I did was I softened this area, okay? There. I softened that in the underpainting. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that border with the underpainting, okay? And again, remember, the awesome factor, okay? Don't forget the awesome factor, okay? The awesome factor is when you leave some of the underpainting to show through. So that's what I'm gonna do with the hair. And I'm trying to use less medium right now. In theory, you know, I should be using more medium since this is a new layer, but I'm just going to try to have a more matte finish. I'm going to zoom the camera out a little bit so you can see how I paint the hair. Now the camera is zoomed out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, uh, let's see here, if I can find a larger brush, um, whatever, let's just use this one. I don't know if you can see the palette. Hopefully you can. So the alizarin, basically the same mixture. Uh, let's put some burnt umber into it. Okay, that's too warm. Ultramarine blue. And I'm trying to use less medium right now. So I can have a more matte layer. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to stand back and really far back make sure that that value is what I want. And as you can tell, I mean, the color, you know, color is not that bright, okay? I chose the average color within a given area, and I, I'm not trying to push the color, okay? I know that the um, saturation of these colors is very mute, very neutral, very much almost like grayish, like, you know, over here. What in the world? Okay, so more ivory black. All right, so let's a flat area here and I'm trying to leave some of the underpainting to show through I'm trying to at least and um, I think I've actually shown you all the footage for today unless I edit some of it out later I don't think I will but I've had many requests for longer episodes believe it or not here I was thinking that that you wanted shorter episodes. But I'm going to give you a longer episode today. There. So that is another edge that you really, really want to keep 
super soft. You want this edge to be very, 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 very soft, okay? Because if it's sharp, if you make this too sharp, it's gonna look like her hair is artificial, like she's wearing a wig. Which, there's nothing wrong with wearing a wig, okay? She just wasn't wearing a wig, that's all. And a little bit of a uh, little flesh tone right there to paint in the partition of her hair. Not too much though. Don't want to give her a, a bald spot. I think that's good. Might have pushed a little too much. Go back into that. There we go. And again, whatever we mess up, um, there's always going to be another layer. So we'll be fine. It's all good. All right, so a little more of the ivory black, uh, ultramarine blue, burnt umber down here. That might be too dark. See, I, I forgot my yellow ochre, so cadmium orange. Goodness, what am I doing without yellow ochre? Oh well, I think we'll be fine. So I left some of the underpainting here, some of the underpainting in here, some of the underpainting I will leave around here just to preserve the awesome factor. So the way I'll preserve the underpainting is just by applying a kind of scratchy brush stroke. Okay. You want that underpainting to show through. It's rare to see a painting that has such a, um, you know, such a delicacy where you can see the layers as they build up. It's really neat. You see that a lot in a lot of old master paintings. And you know, that's what I'm striving for. All right, let me stand back to make sure you can see what I'm painting. Okay, so it looks like the camera shot ends somewhere around here. So, and we're just gonna scumble, scumble. See, I, I know that some people don't like that word, so spread, okay? We're spreading the paint. There, that's what I want. I want to leave the awesome factor here. All right, can you guess what I'm gonna do now? This is the last clip until, you know, the, the outro, if you wanna call it that. What do I usually do? If you think you know what I'm gonna do right now, comment down below. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get a clean and dry soft brush, and I'm just gonna selectively soften some areas. And I, I think I do this pretty much every time, like every clip before the like last, like you know the where I say what what I usually say at the end of each video. All right, so do I want to soften anything else? Okay, maybe this. Okay, and that's gonna be it for today's episode. That being said, always, 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 always remember, in a world that can be so negative, kind of like how I was in the beginning of today's episode, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. And for me, you know, I don't even know how to snap my fingers anymore. Like, this was the spark. That was the spark that made me feel more positive. So now I'm feeling much more positive and I would like to be the spark that makes your world a much more positive place today. Like I usually say, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do truly hope that today's episode helps you out. Thank you so much for all of your support. And if you would like to support this channel even more, I now have a Patreon account. So at the end of today's episode, I will give out the shout outs to our new patrons. And this is what the painting looks like with the camera as close to front and center as I can possibly get it. The clip after this one will be the shout outs, okay? So if you're waiting for the shout out, it will be after this clip, which will be the last clip of the episode. Anyway, as you can tell, uh, the color hasn't, you know, it's not that bright, okay? It's not very vibrant, but it is a localized color within each area, which will set the pace for the more advanced colors to come in and later on uh, we're going to continue to work around here here all over here and then we're going to apply some more information into the dress 
All right, and it is now time to give out the shout outs to our new patrons. So, Myra, thank you so much for becoming a patron to this YouTube channel. It really means so much. Chris Alita Tomasi, thank you so much for becoming a Patreon to this channel. Thank you both so, so much. I sincerely am very, very grateful for your support. With your support, we will be able to, in the future, upgrade our equipment, have a painting studio with some ventilation, even the slightest bit of ventilation, be able to work from life and so many more fun and exciting things to improve the content in these videos. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.